I've become a cyborg, so I've got an antenna on my back. Let's see if that works. Um, right. So, first of all, a few introductions to. Hey. Hey. Guys. Guys, nobody can hear. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. A few introductions first. First of all, it's me. Uh, I've been with KDE for some time um, uh, and got my master's degree in writing some KDE software, which was lovely. Um, and most recently, I've been a member of the Caligra team and before then a member of the Gluon team, which uh, is not very active anymore. Um, and most recently, uh, became an employee of Blue Systems, uh, where I uh, last year presented uh, an Android runtime that some of you may remember. Um, and most recently, have been working on this, which is a Kirigami based application that is designed specifically to do nothing but read digital comic books. Um, Digital comic books, uh, not unlike ebooks, have some fairly specific requirements um, uh, for how to read them, which means that it doesn't really work very well in something like, say, Ocular, which is a generic, very powerful uh, document viewer. Um, there are some interaction methods that simply don't work very well, uh, and which uh, which something like Peruse can can do because it doesn't try to do everything, uh, it can do that a little bit better. Uh, it reads, amongst other things, the comic book archive format. And um, one of the problems that we currently have is, well, people need to get these things, which right now means going on to some very dodgy websites or Usenet or you know various sort of things like that. It's sort of not very pleasant, that whole ecosystem. Um, there are locked down stores out there right now, which are things like Comixology, which is very, very proprietary and not only do they not have a, uh, th there are problems in that one which are things like their, their monetization format is a little bit heavy if you're a, uh, an independent publisher. Um, so sort of rather heavy handed. I've heard horror stories of 70% of revenue going to the distributor on something like Comixology. Um, and Obviously, they, that, that's a problem in itself, but it's also a problem that the, they, there's simply no access to that sort of thing from outside. Uh, so we have to work out a way of doing that. So we have this thing called the Open Collaboration Services. If you've been here for about half an hour, you'll know exactly what that is. Um, well, you'll also know it. If you've been a KDE user over the last 15 years, you will have seen these various little bits. Oop, wrong one. <laughs> um, all, that's the K stars, which will download all sorts of interesting things, new star, cat star field catalogs and so on. But you'll also get all of those little star buttons all over the place. And you already know them. You've already used it. And um, when it comes to the technical side of this, <laughs> Everybody loves to hate this thing. Um, there have been several attempts at replacing it with something else, and um, they've all failed. Um, and these days, obviously, Sebas already spoke about this. It, the main implementation of that is now, yeah, it, it is officially now a KDE project. And this is really cool. It means that we no longer have those apart from the minor technical issue that some people just don't like the particular exchange format that exists for OCS, which is, yes, there are technical problems, but it's a web API. There are going to be technical problems there. Let's move on from that for a bit. Um, so we have some technologies 
in KDE that have been working rather well for this for some time. Uh, the first one is the very low level bound directly and rather tightly to OCS uh, Qt based C++ library uh, called libattica. Um, it's, as it says, the official C++ testbed for OCS features. If a feature is implemented in OCS, the, the standard that is OCS, it has to be employed both on a server implementation and a client implementation. And since, since inception, Attica has been the one uh, that did that on the client. Uh, it is, however, a little bit heavy. Uh, it, if you want to do very sort of very intricate things, it's very powerful. But if you want to do, well, essentially things like putting those buttons uh, on a dialogue to get hard new stuff, it's really awkward to work with um, because the boilerplate is the same size for for any small amount of work you want to do. So hence, okay, new stuff, which is um, which sits currently in tier three. Um, it's uh, currently Q widget based, and um, yeah, it's it's very very simple, very straightforward to use. Um, you add a new stuff button uh, to it, yeah the that one the button. You can access the other things as well, but really the button is the one that most people use. Um, and you just add that to a dialog, and off you go. Uh, you you obviously you have to have content on the server to be able to you know use that button for anything other than showing a, an empty dialog that says there's no such categories, but um, yeah, it's a button and a config file of that's four lines long, and then you pretty much got it. It's very, very straightforward to use. Um, what it is, though, is obviously, yeah, it's one of the heaviest things to include in any application, um, mostly because, uh, yeah, so it includes uh, Keo, which in itself is not too bad, but it also includes yeah the text widgets and widget add-ons, not too bad either. But XML GUI pulls in everything, literally everything. There is no tier two library that isn't included, um, which is great for KD applications um, because you know we've we've sort of been used to this for some time. You know, a KD application. Uh, generally speaking, will run on a Plasma desktop, and that already pulls in most of the dependencies, and that's all fine. It, uh, but not so great for other people. Um, say we want someone who writes a pure Qt application, uh, or a mobile application, or whatever, uh, to 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 use the new stuff functionality. It's really heavy. It, it's very very heavy. Um, and we also have people who may not may want to be on places that are not necessarily a Plasma desktop on Linux. Um, and some of these places are also places that are not necessarily widgets. So what we're working on now is the splitting up of this, uh, which we will eventually we will have three frameworks. Um, and I know that there are going to be people who run packaging and distributions who will be shouting at me for this. Uh, they all hate when we split up, uh, uh, pack, uh, split up our frameworks into micro frameworks. And uh, I believe there was a, a, an atomic int somewhere. Uh, framework, was that? No, uh, int that's zero. Uh, int that's zero, yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, right, so, but I believe that this is one that actually needs to be split up because what it allows us to do is take all of the strict widget based uh, functionality that we've got in KNew stuff now um, and split that out into its own thing. Uh, because it is already a released framework, we have to retain binary compatibility. Um, luckily, the KNew stuff framework is so pleasantly designed that that has been really easy. Uh, so 
uh, as it sits in the branch right now, uh, it uh, it installs on a system and it doesn't break anything at all. It just works. Um, and that's with what comes next. Um, yeah, obviously some beautification and so on, uh, but all the API in any real way stays the same. Uh, then we have split out the core. Um, as it says, we can't actually put it into tier one because there are some still some frameworks that we depend on, but it's a very low dependency tier two framework. Um, and then the new new framework, which is KNU stuff quick, uh, which is a sister to uh, KNU stuff, which possibly would have been renamed if we didn't want to retain both binary and source compatibility, uh, which is obviously so we have KNU stuff core, and we have the widget one, which is KNU stuff, and KNU stuff quick for anything based on Qt quick. So in KNU stuff core, we have a load of stuff that already existed as convenience functionality that was used in, K, in KNU stuff. That was great. <laughs> um, yes, a bunch of models and the engine and the cache, which is possibly uh, one of the more important things. Right now, there is no way of, of loading any of this offline. You have to have an online connectivity to be able to see anything that you've got installed, uh, to be able, which is a problem if you want to just uninstall something that you've installed. You have to be online to be able to check uh, the current status of that one on server. Um, and then we have, uh, yeah, the new stuff quick, which is just a straightforward cute quick API uh, in, in the way that cute quick APIs must work. Um, there are two ways of using this. Either you use the, uh, currently uh, Kirigami probably will just remain Kirigami based uh, list uh, uh, components, which are essentially the cute quick equivalent to using KNS button. The simplest possible thing you can do um, and you end up with something which will list things that are available uh, on uh, on the store in the categories that you want. Uh, in this case, uh, it is uh, so Plasma Tube, Yamaha, and Web and so on. Those are Plasma widgets, um, and it just will let you install and rate and so on the various bits um, uh, that exist in that. And it all looks the same, so very equivalent to KNS3 button. Or you can use the API directly, which is where the more sort of interesting opportunities start to happen. So what you've got here is, well, the first one was you just, this is where you would get comic books. But obviously if you already downloaded a comic book from a series of comic books, what happens when you reach the end of that comic book? You want to be able to keep reading that. Just, you know, and who knows, there might be another, another, uh, chapter in that series that's been published since you downloaded the most recent one and that would then be able to show up in your list of what to read next. That's not something that would fit very well into a sort of standard API. You know, obviously this is comic books, this is very app specific. Uh, so we need to be able to access the model directly, we need to be able to check what's installed, what's not installed without being tied to using a specific set of, of user interface components. Um, and that then is what uh, the this splitting up of bits is for. Um, so we have some samples. Now, first of all, a quick little rundown of what we got. We got Attica, uh, which is very powerful. We got KNU stuff core, which is uh, which does most of the stuff that Attica does, except much more. Uh, easily, much more simply, um, and covers most of the sort of core use cases that that OTS sort of suggests. Uh, then we have the old style uh, KNU stuff and the new Qt Quick stuff. Now, Attica and KNU stuff, those already have very good documentation as it exists, so I'm not going to talk about them. So 
uh, because those samples exist already. Um, but KNews.core and KNews.quick have some bits. So what you can do with KNews.core that you can't do currently uh, with uh, the KNews.expose exposed API is something like this, which is, yeah, it looks a little bit silly. Um, so you always have to create an engine which you initialize with your uh, KNSRC, which is a file that describes what, uh, which provider you have your content on. Uh, in most cases, that would be the open desktop default one, um, but it also defines what your, um, uh, what, yeah, what the categories you want to, want, want to access are. Um, what that then does is that in combination with getting the cache for the application Peruse, yeah, this is actually a little bit silly. So Peruse currently will look for wallpapers uh, because we don't have a category as yet on the, on the store which uh, provides comic books. Uh, but uh, the cache for Peruse is told through this bit uh, that the, right, so the engine has a number of providers, which are just string IDs, which are the same as identified in the cache. So we go through all the providers, and then we ask the, ca the cache that we got up here for uh, the registry as it exists for those, uh, for that provider, and then we list all of those entries um, for the provider. Now, those of you who have worked with K new stuff before, we'll notice that that doesn't exist. Um, that's changing. <laughs> so that that currently literally was not a possibility. That's now becoming a possibility. Uh, so that's sort of the offlineiness of K new stuff wasn't really a thing that was considered important before. So that's now being fixed. Um, and so the quick stuff. So to show how simple that is, this is way more verbose than it needs to be. Those message bits don't really need to be handled. All you need is that line, that line, and that line, and the config file. Um, and then you end up with something that looks like that, and we'll install and remove and rate and everything. So uh, very much like KNS3 button. Very, very simple, very straightforward. If you're using a cute quick application and just need to be able to install some stuff, that's all cool. Now, you can also use these, this stuff directly. So because it's cute quick, you've got access to the models. You don't have to uh, uh, use all of these components. So, you know, if we take a hypothetical, uh, your own component, which will take uh, a bit of text, it knows what, what sort of things to do with an image URL. Uh, we know that uh, the, the preview small bit of the model is a list of pictures, which may or may not have any entries. So because lists in QQuick might crash if you try and access something that doesn't exist, we have to make sure that we don't try and pull an entry out of a list that's, that doesn't have any entries. So Hence the sort of odd, sort of awkward looking stuff there. Possibly something we can fix. Um, and then we want to be able to put some kind of little like badge on the thing that you've got. So you get the status, which is a, uh, a, a an enum on the uh, new stuff items model, uh, which you can check internally in your code. So just because that's easier, if we say that you've clicked it, it can then uh, check it like that. Uh, basically, the idea would be that you wouldn't necessarily want to do that. You would do that inside your component, so you haven't got that handling there. But for the purpose of a demonstration, that I thought that was probably a bit more straightforward. And all you then do is you create your engine, you create your model, and then you use that model's content. Again, deliberately, very simple, very straightforward. Um, and so, 
what we then have is the ability to read comics. We have peruse. We have the ability to get hot new stuff. Yay, you put the name in the thing. Um, and now what we want to be able to do is to be able to get comics. That is the new quick get hot new stuff stuff. But we also have some comics that we want to have comics to be able to get some. Uh, the problem is obviously in any store, you need content. So yeah, some of you may remember this picture from many years ago when I stood on a stage in Tampere and talked about uh, uh, content distribution uh, uh, with Gluon. And yeah, hence also the Migo logo on that one. Um, and essentially, the concept here is the same. It's someone has an idea, we create that content, uh, we help that person bring that idea to fruition, we put it on a web service, opendesktop.org, and then we can consume it. And we can go back again as well with reviews and comments and so on. And the author can then comment back again and everything. So to be able to complete that circle, that's what K New Stuff Next is. So if anybody of you wants to help with it, we have a project on Fabricator that was created to uh, further that. Um, and um, thank you to Ken Vermette for pulling out all the stops in an hour. He has created a new icon for me. Um, and uh, we have this little tiny, tiny tool so far called Peru's Creator, which will uh, facilitate the uh, content creators of the world with the ability uh, to create comics. And now the comic book format is really, really simple. It is very literally a zip file with some pictures in it. The problem with very simple formats is this whole ad hoc-ness of them. So you can do them, but you want to be able to do them properly. So as something like Peru's Creator, which will make sure that the files are named in a proper way and that you end up with something which is actually consumable in a sensible fashion. And then comes all of the extensions with the fancy animation type stuff that people want in digital comics these days. That comes later. <laughs> but for now, Peru's Creator, very, very simple, will create some comics for you to upload to um, the, uh, the KDE store. So, yeah, that's where we got to. Uh, we have three minutes for questions. Uh, so, quick questions. I think that's what I originally said. I wanted three minutes for questions. Apparently, um, yeah, apparently that's like tight. Yeah, that works. Uh, congratulations for your, your work with Can New Stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, when you release Perus to Android? Pardon? When, when you will release Perus to Android? Uh, as soon as we are able to get uh, Ocular working on Android, the PDF support, yeah, he's hiding behind a pillar now. <laughs> um, no, right, so the problem we've got right now is that Ocular um, the, is the way we get, yeah, so the, the peruse will sort of read all the comic book formats and all of that, but it will also read PDFs and EPUB and so on. And the way it does that right now is by using Ocular because we have this thing that will very, uh, that will render all this stuff very well, but it's kind of heavy. Uh, so if we don't want it, if we don't want PDF support and EPUB, if we just want CBR for, uh, support, it wouldn't be an enormous amount of effort. Um, but it would be nice. What? CBR support, one of the Well, it's called, yes, that, okay. Why CBR and not CBZ? <laughs> CBR is two things. CBR is comic book archive, which is the format. It is also 
the subformat of Comic Book Archive format, which uses RA to do the compression work. Um, so if you see a CBR, it is probably a RA file, but a CBZ file is also a CBR file. It's just using zip instead. So yeah, the ad hoc formats are fun. <laughs> Uh, but yes, so that that's yeah. It'll it'll take a while before we get PDF support at least on Android. But it'll yeah, peruse itself will will happen. Also because I have an Android tablet and I want to be able to read my comics on it. <laughs> Thank you so much.